After making my last video about coffee and drinking a cup of coffee while I made the video, I'm just going to start incorporating that in more of my at-home recording studio sessions. My God. One of my favorite aspects of backpacking in general is setting up a kit and bringing it into the backcountry and making it work. Surviving with everything that you have on your back. And that's all you need. It's one of those things that just drew me to the outdoors and backpacking in general is that idea of surviving, surviving outside with all of the things that you need just strapped to your back. And that's what kind of made me a bit of a gear nerd. I want to perfect this system. I want to make it as good as possible. And over the last 10 years, I've tried various items. In my first backpack that I tried to buy was an 85 liter bag. And luckily the gear shop that I went to was like, no, 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 you don't need an 85 liter bag. Instead, they sold me a 70, which as a beginner backpack, that was, that was a great choice. I needed that 70 liter because there's all these trinkets and knickknacks and different things that I thought I was going to use while I was backpacking. Part of that setup was like a little hatchet and a saw. And like, I thought I'd have so much spare time to like whittle a little thing. And it just wasn't the, wasn't the case. Over the years, I determined I spent a lot more time hiking. And when I was in camp, I was tired and I wanted to sleep and I wanted to eat. So I would simplify my system and slowly chip away at it until it was just the essentials. And then I decided I spent a lot of time carrying around a mostly empty backpack. So I dropped it down to a 55 liter. And then I spent some time alpine climbing. And if you ever meet some of those psychopaths, they barely take anything up into the mountains with them at all, into these extremely hostile, just variable conditions. They just, they bring like nothing. They're like, oh, we don't, we don't need a sleeping bag, mate. We just, you know, we just throw a down jacket on and sleep on a rope. So given a bit of that information, I, I learned some of their techniques. And I was going out into the backcountry and camping with a 25 liter backpack, which I thought was just absurd. And through that process, I learned so much about how to efficiently use space. Because if you're bringing climbing gear and ropes and so on and so forth, you have to be as efficient as possible when you're throwing things in your backpack. And on my through trail that I just did last summer, I bought a 40 liter backpack, which for five months on trail is like, what? That's, a, that's a really small bag. And I was quite apprehensive at first, but I determined like over the years, when I have the space, I tend to use it. And when I use that space, I pack my fears. And when I pack my fears, I bring things I don't really need in the first place. And I see that all the time on the trail. And if you're a beginner, I think that it's an important part of the learning process is to make yourself feel secure in the backcountry. Don't put yourself in danger. Don't put others in danger. Bring all the layers you think you need, and then maybe just a little bit more until you have the experience to make up for it. And as I become more experienced in the backcountry, I determine that I don't need X, Y, and Z. And spending a lot of time out west going on numerous backpacking trips, especially the shorter ones, I would come home after a two or three day time in the backcountry and I would look at all the things that I didn't really use and I would just get it out of my backpack. And when it came time to do longer carries, seven or 10 days with food, that's when the efficiency really came into play. And using that efficiency to my benefit, I learned that I could probably go even smaller than a 40 liter backpack for a through trail and be fairly comfortable. I'm going to link up above my full gear list for TA that I used last summer. Check it out. It's a full comfort backpacking kit and I have a full size, full frame camera. My base weight was 16 pounds. I really didn't have like a super ultra light kit, but I was able to fit all of that into my 40 liter backpack. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And the first thing I want to get into is some of the tips. Um, the bag that I used was the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Junction. It's right here. This is a 40 liter backpack and I found a lot of success. If you think these are pretty sweet bags, I did. You can check out my review. I'm going to link it above. And in the description below, I'm going to drop a code that you can use at Hyperlite and you'll get 15% off a bag like this or anything else that they make. So go check that out. And initially, I just wanted to give you some of the more general and broad tips that got me into a very successful position and that I've learned over the years. It's about five tips that make just packing a backpack easier. 
And after I do these five tips, we're going to put it all into practice. And I'm going to show you how I pack my backpack exactly and just quickly walk you through all of that stuff. So the first tip is your heaviest item you're going to want in your back panel, like right here, not at the very bottom and not at the very top. If you're at the top, it's going to really pull you around. So you really want to just keep it right at the, the low back area. Um, that'll be items like water and food. Your food is probably your heaviest item. So it'll give you a lot more balance and a lot more structure. Let's go ahead and take that strap out of my coffee and take a sip. So tip number two would be think of the order in which you are going to use these items from your bag. You do not want to throw important ready to use things like your lunch or your rain jacket at the bottom of your bag. You will not believe how many times I've kicked myself because it starts raining and I have to blow my entire kit out and pull my rain jacket. That's the last thing you want to do. Chances are you're just going to try and power through the rain for a bit like I would and uh, you're going to get super soaked and still have to get that raincoat out anyways. My third tip is to stay away from stuff sacks. Every stuff sack needs to have a very distinct and exact purpose. There are so many times where I find too many stuff sacks makes my life way worse. I have four stuff sacks and one of them is circumstantial. We'll get into that in a second. But the first one that I use is for my sleeping bag. I want a waterproof roll top stuff sack for my sleeping bag because that is my last defense in case of an emergency. And if I drop my bag into a river and everything gets soaked and I find it a mile or so downstream and I'm all late and I'm not actually making it to my designated campsite like I intended to in the first place, I know for a fact my sleeping bag will be dry. That's very important. The next one I have is a roll top for my food because I'm not searching through my bag in bear country and hoping that I didn't forget or lose a Snickers somewhere. I have a ditty bag, which is just for electronics and little stuff, whatever. If you have a brain on the top of your backpack, you probably don't need this stuff sack at all, but it just keeps my headlamp and other little trinkets organized and easy to find when I pull it all out. And the last one I have is just my allergy kit because I go anaphylactic from tree nuts, not a big deal but I do need some EpiPens in the backcountry, so I throw those into an allergy kit. That one, circumstantial, that's just me. But stay away from them. If you need it, need it, like I do for my allergy kit or the Diddy bag, go for it. I definitely want one for my sleeping bag. And if you do use a stuff sack, in most cases, it's better to have it larger, and especially for those odds and end items like your Diddy bag, that way you can kind of flex it and maneuver it into the bag. Another tip I'm gonna give you is keep it simple. A lot of times when I am shopping for things, I will just buy all the accessories I think that I need. I'll get the accessory kit and all the stuff sacks and a fanny pack and a little thing and blah, blah. Just keep it simple at first. You know, you don't need every single little attachment to the front of your backpack. A little bit helps you organize, but too much makes you even less organized. And every bag and every packing cube that you bring along is a weight penalty. If you keep it real simple, these are full feature backpacks at this point. We are pretty advanced in making backpacks at this stage in the game. Just use what's provided. And my last tip I'm gonna give you is don't clip a bunch of stuff to the top of your backpack like they do in the movies. In the movies, you see the military people, the trampers, the hikers have all these like cups and pots and clankety clankety blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. You look like a weird, poor Rambo. No, no one wants that to be out there. To keep your bag tight and streamlined, don't clip a bunch of crap to the outside. If you are securing things to the outside, like you will sometimes with your tent and so on, make it secure, make it so it's not swaying or swinging and it can't really get caught on things. As you're passing through branches and bushwhacking a little bit, and step by step, you don't want all these things swaying around and pulling and moving your balance. It's just, it's uncomfortable. And maybe having your cup clipped to the outside looks a little bit cool, but after a long day of it just like tapping on your bag, eventually, if you're doing weeks and weeks and weeks at a time, like a through trail, you're gonna wear a hole through that section of your bag by your cup just rubbing. 
It's just not a great idea. Find a spot in your bag, shove some undies in that cup and put it deep. So there you have it. There's a couple of tips. Now I'm going to run through exactly how I pack my backpack. So when I'm packing up my backpack, I break everything up into five different categories. Getting organized initially helps everything get done and make sure I don't lose things. I don't have that much stuff with me, but it becomes a pretty complex process when you're putting it into a really small bag. So you're trying to be as efficient as possible with your space. My first category is my sleep system. That's gonna go into the bag first. That is my tent and my sleeping bag ground pad, things I don't use until the end of the day. Next, I have my heavy items. My heaviest thing is definitely my food by far and my fuel. So I just throw my pot and all that other stuff with it. Because also at the bottom, I don't need that till the end of the day. Next, I have my camp clothes and some insulating layers that I probably won't use also until the end of the day. So I use that to fill any of the dead space or gaps at the bottom of my backpack and create a nice platform. Next, I throw in my ditty bag, my poop kit, just in case, rain jacket, a mid layer, and my lunch stuff. And lastly, I have all the items that I put on the outside of my backpack, my tent stakes, trekking poles, sit pad, water filter, and so on. That's simply it. And I throw all of that into my 40 liter bag. I have a pack liner. I use a pack liner just because another defense against the rain. Another thing I love to do is use this waterproof stuff sack as a compression bag for my sleeping bag. And that's one of the first things I'll do is just break this down. Now that I have all that crammed in the bottom, that's probably the hardest part of this whole packing process. I will throw my food in right up against this back panel right here because it's the heaviest thing. Throw the fuel down low. Pot's going next. Allergy kit. Stay away from tree nuts, kids. Then I have these layers. This is amazing to really fill out these spaces. Another thing I see really new hikers do is they're kind of afraid to stuff things into the backpack. You want to be as efficient with the space as possible. You're really not going to hurt too many things by cramming it all together. So strong stuff, it can hold up. Next, I'm going to throw the ditty bag in. Then I'll throw my lunch, mid layer. You're gonna do your compression straps last. And that's for the main body of the backpack. It's really good to get these compression straps as tight as possible, get everything kind of locked down. That way you don't have that much swaying and movement inside of your backpack. I'll generally put two water bottles here don't have them with me right now. That water filter will sit on top of there. A little sit pad. My dish towel, because it's just always wet. Yeah, just leave it there to dry. Ten steaks. Some granola bars. Sunglasses. Spork and a knife. AirPods. Cell phone. So there you have it. That's how I pack my backpack. It's a pretty simple process. It takes a bit of practice. Everybody's a bit different and you are gonna have different things in your bag than I do and different needs throughout the day. Give yourself a couple of categories. I go with that five, bottom, middle, top, outside, and then some insulation layers to fill those extra gaps. And don't be afraid to stuff your things into the bag as much as possible. That's why I kind of stay away from stuff sacks is I can fill those gaps with the clothes that normally would be constricted to just that, that packing cube or that stuff sack. If you want to grab 15% off anything for Hyperlite, snag the code in the bio, use it, reap the benefits from it. I don't really get any money from that, but it's just something to help you out. And check out the link for all the gear list, the full gear list that I brought on TA with me last summer. 
and my review of this backpack if you're interested. Cool. Thanks for tuning in.